Hey, it's Ted here again. I'm in the diesel lab and I wanted to go over some drain points on some Volvo diesel engines. I've gotten some questions in the comments section uh, on how to drain some of these engines. So I'm just gonna go over some of the engines and the drain point locations on them um, and then some of the capacities afterwards. So let's get started. Okay, we'll start with the D1 series engines, D1. 13, 20, and 30s. So above the oil filter here, there is a, this is a drain, plastic drain plug. So attach a 3 8 diameter hose to this, put it in a container, reach in there with a wrench, and loosen that plastic fitting up. And that just gets torqued to two Newton meters. So basically it's got an O-ring, just lightly snug it up when it's drained. So you're gonna open this up, put a hose to a container to catch it, you want to open up your heat exchanger filler cap, and then there is another plug here down on the side on the heat exchanger in the back. So on the back port side, here's your other drain plug. So you're going to take again that hose, put it on here, and you're going to drain the coolant out there, and then fill it back up once you're done draining everything out of it. Snug those back up, fill this back up. Uh, capacities in a minute. Okay, next is the 30 series, 31s, TAMD 31, 32s, um, turbocharged and after cooled. So the two drain points for the block and the heat exchanger are, so on the starboard side, you come aft of the oil cooler and then you come up here and I've attached already a 3 8 diameter hose to this. And then we have also a drain for the oil cooler here and then we have a drain for the heat exchanger here. You also have a drain here for the exhaust manifold so you're going to put that 3 8 hose here, here, and here and then the last thing you want to do is you want to take the drain plug out to get the rest of the antifreeze out of that. Those are the drain points for a 31 series engine. Next, we're going to look at a 44, and a 44 is a little different. This is a KMD 44, and this engine, the drain points are, um, there's two hoses on the starboard side of the engine, and those two hoses, I pulled them out here. One of them has a blue stripe, and the other one does not. I put an actual... Uh, fitting on here so I can drain the antifreeze out of it and show the drain point. So it's not the blue tag one, it's this one is the main block drain. That drains most of the antifreeze out of the system. Then you have the heat exchanger and on the heat exchanger I have a drain here and you may have a drain up in the front depending on the model year of the engine. Those are the two drain points for that. You can also come back here and and back here you can drain the turbocharger as well. You're going to see over here there's also a drain behind the coolant temperature sensor and that is on the exhaust manifold. So you want to drain one, two, three points and then the block hose on a 44. So that's how you drain a 44 series. Okay and for D6 engines you have the drain points are actually on the port side of the engine. So we come over here. This is an early model D6310. So one drain point here is on the side of the port side of the engine in front of the oil coolers and the block drain is back here and there's a fitting that you're going to take off and put a hose on that into a bucket and you can drain it out that way. You've also got on the front of the engine if you have a hot water heater you're going to have to drain that and these are the two points where that hot water heater drain is going to be. So you're going to want to take the hoses off of here and drain those out as well. The same thing applies over here. G6435, a newer model. This is the drain point. And the other drain point again is back there. And Put a hose on that and drain that. Um, the after cooler is raw water cooled. When we come over here, again, you have your hot water heater points here. And there is no drain for the exhaust manifold that drains back within the system. There is no drain for the turbocharger underneath like the 31, so that's not available either. 
to drain that. Um, I've got a 31 series here and to pressure test the aftercooler, I've got a little shortcut for you here, so I'll show you that. So here's a TMD 31 in the aftercooler and I've had people have questions about pressure testing it. Um, it's a raw water cooled unit and it basically has the two hoses that come in and out of the heat exchanger for the aftercooler which cools the air before it goes into the engine. So down on the bottom there's a plug, there's a pipe plug down here and you can take that pipe plug out, put a barb nipple on it, just thread it in there, snug it up and then you can take the two hoses off and then you just take a piece of hose and you tie it together. At that point then you can apply your pressure here of you know three four five psi just to see if the gauge goes down if it leaks at five psi the gauge is going to go down so that will test the actual housing to see if it's sealed if it does leak then you have a leak into the air system i would drain it first and then pressure test it that's another little trick i use and then finally i've got a few um capacities for you so I looked up some of the capacities for some of the engines for the coolant system so your closed cool system for D1 um, 13 horsepower 20 horsepower that's D113 D120 is 2.7 to 3 liters for the 20 horsepower version D130 is 4.1 liters of coolant D2 is the capacity is 6.4 liters for a D240 and it's 9.5 liters for a D250 or a D275. Um, the TAMD 31s, 32s, the uh, coolant capacity is 13 liters. 41s, 44s, and 300s is 19 liter capacity. So those are the capacity for some of the smaller engines. So I hope that helps you figure out where the drain points are on the Volvo diesel engine, some of these mid-sized smaller diesel engines. Um, if you like the video, please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.